So I've shown this equation many times in my Lemonade videos, but it gives us the lifetime value of a customer based on a number of variables. But I don't know, it's a bit of a complex equation, summing a number of series from now until infinity. I don't know if people clearly grasp how it works, what it looks like. And it's important as Lemonade investors to understand the mechanics of this so that you can be confident in some of the marketing unit economics. So I have this equation on my Lemonade model under one of the tabs here as, and as well as this box of inputs that you can put in for premium per customer. And this would be, you know, the initial premium per customer of a person or a cohort of people. So if you imagine, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out a what's an average customer's lifetime value or you could imagine a cohort a big group of customers and say hey this cus this cohort of customers some of them are going to cross sell upsell some of them are going to cancel their policies over time but what could be their estimated value of these customers right now and you get that by figuring out first of all this uh, the, the variables in the equation of premium per customer initial so that's that'd be what premium per customer does the, when the customer sign up or that cohort of customer signs up, what do they sign up as? I just have 388 in there, you know, roughly what the premium per customer is right now. And the next variable is the gross loss ratio, or you could even use net loss ratio or just call it a loss ratio. And but you're, what you're trying to estimate is the lifetime average loss ratio. So I have 70% in there right now. I think 70% is quite conservative because as a cohort of customers sticks around longer and longer and longer, there's a better chance that some of those customers become really profitable, really safe customers. And you have maybe, uh, you know, years down the road that the group of customers uh, becomes more and more profitable or safer. And so this might be even, maybe you could argue this should be 65% or 60%. You know, in the first investor day, they had some graphs or they showed uh, where it was really their their assumed or approximated lifetime average is really dropping. Okay, and then we have ADR annual dollar retention. So this is a function of how much premiums uh, are being for a, a group of the cohort of customers. The it, it takes into account the customers that churn away and cancel their policies, and also the customers that upsell, cross sell their existing policies. So it shows you after a year, you you know, if it's 88%, you've lost 12% of your total premium. And then time value, I'm giving a, uh, we'll get to that in a minute, but a discount on these future cash flows back to today. And I'm putting in 8%. I I would argue that this value should be what the, the money is worth to lemonade. Some people have said, oh, it's got to be higher. It's got to be 10%. It's got to be even more than 10%. It's got to be at least 8%. And I've had it lower in some videos, but I, I, I think, I don't know, often you're doing time value calculations. You're thinking about it from an investor perspective. But in this, in this case, you're thinking about it from lemonade's perspective. And you think, well, what would that money be worth to lemonade if it was sitting in their bank account? Would not be worth 8% a year because they're not going to earn that kind of return overall on the cash that's sitting in their bank account as insurer that has to be, you know, uh, invested their, their float and their funds very, in a very conservative, safe way. So I would argue it could be even less, but I'm putting it at 8% for this calculation. CAC, that's for another video, another time. I have explored that in the past, explained that, how you can calculate your customer acquisition cost. But you plug in all these values and you get your LTV, uh, which is this kind of monster equation here. I've now laid out the entire thing on the side. So it starts at year uh, and a little and a bit of a graph here as well. So it starts from year zero or right now in time all the way out to year 37 or which would be actually in 38 because we start at n equals zero. So about 38 years of time here, um, which is n in this equation. And then on this line, gross profit, I put in the top of the equation here. So premium per customer, if you start with times by one minus gross loss ratio and no dollar retention. So in year number one, uh, forget about the, the, the bottom part of the uh, equation here, the time value part, just looking at the top. So the gross profit in year one for a cohort of customers or your average customer is going to be just your premium per customer, 388 times by one minus 0.7 or 30% left over from your after you pay your losses out for your claims. So 
that's going to be $116 because annual dollar retention to the power of zero is just one, no matter what it is. So you have, which makes sense. There is no change in the cohort in that first year. But now after the first year, you can assume, hey, some of those people, some of the cohort turned away and some stuck around. So what would have been is now a little bit less because you have some annual dollar retention, some churn that's affected that pool of customers. And then again, the next year, that churn keeps multiplying and growing and growing and growing and growing. And that's just natural. That's with any sort of um, pool of customers. Eventually, they're going to decay away. But then you can take that and turn it into a present valued gross profit, which is then taking this, you know, item here above and dividing, oops, and dividing that by your time value. So one plus, you know, 8%. You're divided by 1.08, and then you're dividing this one by 1.08 and 1.08. You're doing it twice, and so on and so forth. 10, you know, 10 years out, you'd have done it 10 times, 10 divisions of 1.08, which basically factors in that says, hey, if you're getting $37 10 years from now, it's really only worth $18 today. Or 20 years from now, if you're getting $10 from a customer, you know, or, or a pool of customers as your average you know, um, gross profit, it's worth only $2. You know, if we said this was, it should be 15%, we turn that up. Well, now, you know, it becomes your at that same time, now it's worth only maybe a dollar in present value. It's worth significantly less, or ten dollars at ten years from now, so, uh, the ten-year point. So, if we flip that back to eight percent, now we're back, you know, in that range. So, and of course, if you went the other way, you said this was four percent. Well, now it's going to shift that up. Now that's worth thirty-one dollars or twenty-six dollars. Sorry, at that, you know, n equals nine, or it's roughly ten-year part point. And if you went back to 8% till now, you're at $18. And then finally, in the bottom row, I have cumulative present gross profit. So all this is doing is this one. If you look at the, the equation, it's just summing up all present gross profit values before it. So you keep adding this. And ultimately, if you're adding all the present value gross profits together, in the end, you're going to converge and arrive at a present gross profit. That is what shows up here in your LTV, uh, your lifetime value, you know, equation here, $629. So with all these inputs, if you look at this graph, uh, all of these red bars show your present gross profit each year. So you can see right at the start, you're getting the most money in the first year and then it becomes less and less. But then this blue line is the summation, the cumulative present value of all those. So it just adds them together. So you can see right off the hop, you start for the first several years, probably four or five years, it's a pretty consistent, almost sloping line with a little bit of decay, and then it quickly decays and reaches by, you know, year 20. You're almost at your, uh, or, or 20, year 2021, 20, so N equals 20. Like N equals 20, you're at $620, and we have a 629 as a total. So it means that all the other years after that, maybe, you know, until 37, now we're basically rounding down to zero. Uh, you, you only get from 620 to, you know, you only get nine more dollars of present value over the next, you know, 10, 15 years, but you have a tiny, maybe there's a big group of customers and you have a tiny group of those customers left over and that's all that's left. So you converge, as you can see, the graph shows here, you converge towards this, this uh, final value. It doesn't matter. Is this goes from n equals zero to infinity? Even if we added this all the way, you know, I added rows from 37 all the way to infinity, it wouldn't change the value. This graph would just span out with a horizontal line that approaches 629 dollars. But other things to know with this, you can see that a lot of the gross profit, you know, say let's say the customer costs $180 to acquire. Well, now you could draw a line at $180 here, and you see somewhere between after the first year and the second year, you're you maybe somewhere in there you're going to pass and recoup the the cost it took to acquire that customer, and and then after that, all the upside after that, well, that's your profit that's going to come in for that customer over their lifetime, and. But it's funny though, 
lemonade bears and critics will often point to look at their financials and point to hey they're ramping up their growth spend lemonade's growth spend is ramping up and look how bad their finances look right now well that's because they're spending a ton or aggressively growing how much they're spending on, on growing their um, finances and then they don't see the full returns of that for many years maybe for the next you can see like again the bulk of the returns happen maybe over the first 10 years from n equals zero to n equals nine you know at that point you're at 547 out of your 629 terminal you only see but in year one you know year two you're only at 116 200 of the total 500 you're going to get so over the next number of years it's really going to scale in the profitability of that cohort. And of course, for Lemonade's sake, each quarter could be considered a new cohort of customers. They're adding on, adding on, layering on, layering on. And if they're ramping up your growth spend, it's going to make your finances look like they've can, they've been aggressively ramping up their growth spend over last year and now this year as well. And so that's going to make the finances last year and any comparisons there this year look look worse and then they're going to suddenly look much much better as all these cohorts stack and maybe they reach more of a consistent growth spend where they continue to stack these cohorts but i hope this is helpful insightful to you or helps you understand how this is working how what this sort of the ltv graph looks like over time and why you just reach a value and make sort of uh, makes some greater understanding of what this is talking about. You know, an another thing I think people get confused by with LTV is they think it, they assume that it's equal to the initial premium per customer that a uh, that a customer um, brings in or their IFP that a customer brings in. And the management has said this is roughly the same or has been the same. But it doesn't necessarily mean that's going to be the same thing or, or even be the same thing. They just, it just sort of was a coincidence that based on where their unit economics were at, they have told us that, yeah, roughly, and that was uh, at least a year ago last time I heard that, they said the, the, the premium coming in was equal to the LTV. Now, that doesn't have any, really anything to do with the LTV calculation. This is the LTV uh, calculation, but... It's a, it was just an interesting point that they made based on based on where their annual dollar retention was at and their gross loss ratio was at. Now, I don't think that would necessarily be the case as much anymore. It'd be better it's better and you know more first principle to just look at this equation and then understand that. And of course, like if you play with these other variables as well, like maybe you say annual dollar retention is going to go to 90% and maybe, you know, your gross loss ratio for the whole you know, entire lifetime average is 65%. Well, now you start shifting your graph around and you can still see the shape of the graph remains consistent, but now your LTV goes to, you know, 800. Maybe your customer acquisition cost goes higher. Maybe it's, maybe it's 225, but you still get an LTV three, you know, three plus, maybe four range, depending. Um, but I don't think, you know, I think actually it's going to be less than 70 would be your lifetime average for customers. Where exactly, I don't know. An annual dollar trenchion, I wouldn't be surprised if it went into, you know, high kind of 80, or potentially could reach 90 as they ramp up products like car, but say we leave it at 88, you're still an LTV to CAC of four in that range. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Remember, it's in the bag.